Hi there, and welcome to Mental Plays. I have this ambition of doing an all achievements run, in Oxygen Not Included. I've never done one before, and I've never tried to do Carnivore before, which is to try to get 400 kcal eaten in the first 100 cycles. I did just watch my girlfriend do that on no sweat mode, which is what I want to do my game in, because I consider myself to be a pretty sloppy Oxygen Not Included player, and I don't have any interest in trying to deal with increased radiation more than anything else for when I have to go out into space. So my attempt to do all achievements is going to be on no sweat mode first. Once I do that, then my next goal will be able to do it on survival. Before I do that, I did just hit a milestone on having one of my colonies reach over cycle 2000. Even though I've had other colonies where I have the ability to do that, this is the first time that I've had a colony where I've been really driven to continue past cycle 2000 because I'm trying to do a whole bunch of things that I've never done before. I've never tried to land on the magma planet before. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the gassy moo planet before. So I thought before I would do a series on the all achievement run, I would do a short series on what I have going on in my 2000 plus colony just to showcase some of the stuff that I've done and why I feel confident that I'm at a place now where I can do an all achievement run even though I'm still very sloppy in the way that I deal with this game. So I'll break this particular video, the starting video, as an overall summary of what I have done so far, and then I'll pick various things to talk about in subsequent episodes before I start my actual all achievement run. This is a quick look at what my primary asteroid looks like. I started on classic mode, so this asteroid is pretty big. Here's a quick overlay view of my power of my heat, of my liquid, of my gas, of my automation, and of my conveyor. This is my primary living area where the exosuits uh, come from four different directions and all of the main eating and sleeping and showering and all that stuff kind of happens in here. The oxygen for this particular living area is coming strictly from CO2 deletion from my oxyferns. I have a few basic things that are kind of happening here as it relates to uh, de-germifying water in a powerless way. This is a Francis John technique where this infinite storage spot can be picked up by the auto sweeper, but uh, dupes can't get in there. The atmosphere itself is chlorine, so it's sterile, and the actual temperature is around negative 20 degrees. So it's both in deep freeze and also in a sterile atmosphere, which significantly decreases the rate of which food actually spoils. A majority of my food is lazily in berry sludge, however, since that's what I use for rocket travel. But I do also have a lot of other food kind of lying around that the dupes can eat um, because the berry sludge is actually very far away being shipped off to the top part of the map. This is my farm of bristleberry and sleet wheat. I use auto sweepers to take any dropped food from either of these and throw it into this square right here. Then this auto sweeper can take it and preload the microbe musher for the produ production of berry sludge. I have a steam room that is primarily used to deal with very hot production of glass, refined metal, um, other things needed by the rock crusher, super coolant, uh, and kiln related things, either refined carbon or ceramic. I'm also offsetting some of that steam to go into the sauna. I have a shine bug reactor, which is where I'm getting all of my rad bolts. I have one here. I have another one actually in the top left-hand corner of the map, specifically for powering my rad bolt rockets. I've got four of them total. Um, these two are actually defunct because I um, these two were set up really early and have an old design of my rocket interior, um, and I haven't had a chance to upgrade them to what I've come to in my final design. This is a very old uh, oxalate producing area. The way that I deal with oxalate, not off-gassing when I need to load it into a rocket, is by uh, 
throwing it over to another area that's completely submerged in liquid, um, which is taken by the auto sweeper over to that side. And then when the rockets land and I need oxalate to be thrown in, then dupes will just grab it and throw it in manually because there's no way to get oxalate automatically into a rocket. I've since upgraded that over to a slightly different setup here that's a little bit better because it actually has a cooling loop that's going through that so that the oxalate is not too hot. Um, this is for my hydrogen engine um, rockets, which I'm now using primarily to um, extract stuff from the star map. The only other thing that I'll go over in large summary is down at the bottom of my map, I have a huge slickster farm. Let me pull that back just a little bit. I have a slickster farm that I'm using not really to produce uh, an exorbitant amount of petroleum and oil, but more just to uh, get rid of a bunch of CO2 that comes from my petroleum generators. I do have a petroleum boiler over on this side that is also of a Francis John design. If you go onto the fandom page, then there's a description of how to do this. On the fandom page, it says that this is a now kind of a outdated design, but I still use it and I've actually used a modified version of it on one of my other maps. This is the first asteroid that I could have teleported to. I have not done a whole lot here. The primary thing that I did here was to um, tame this gold volcano and then just automatically ship any gold that comes from here to my primary asteroid. So I have an infinite resource of gold from that. Um, aside from that, there isn't really a whole lot of here that I really wanted to do. I have yet to delve into any kind of radiation stuff or deal with beta hives. That is something that I'll get into when I do my all achievement run because I have to. I've been avoiding dealing with any radioactive part of it because the petroleum boilers a lot of solar panels and uh, steam power rooms uh, do fine for my purpose. I did land on the water plant and enhance some plans, but some of those plans fell to the wayside, so I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with this whole spot here. I've been focusing primarily on the magma planet, setting up uh, a steam room for power and solar power so I can try to tackle this niobium volcano uh, for the first time ever. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to deal with it yet, but I want to avoid, I've looked at the wiki for basic information about what the, some of the challenges are, but I'm avoiding taking a look at the forums to look for full blown solutions because I want to try to come up with a solution on my own. And then the Gassimu planet is the other developed planet that I have because I decided that I wanted to have one of my asteroids function as a zoo to showcase all of the different critters that exist in this game. Um, this is my first go at this. I think that if I do my all achievement run that I'll design this very differently. It would be nice to be able to do some critter morphs, but I think the space, the way that I actually space this out because I was building this a little bit at a time, it's not actually that easy to, um, I've, I've really cramped myself and unless I decide to make these ranches a lot smaller, then I don't know that I've got room to be able to deal with all the morphs in their own separate pen. And I think that is it. So like I said, I'm going to be doing some videos to showcase various aspects of the build that I've done through this colony and the journey that I've had over these 2000 cycles. If there's anything in particular that you have any questions about, or if you have any suggestions for how I might do things better, then I'm very open to that. I would not have gotten as far in this game if it wasn't for content that was put out by Francis John or feedback from other players that are a lot better at this game than me. I'm also very interested in sharing the knowledge that I've gained to help other players become more knowledgeable in this game themselves because my obsession with this game is complete. Like I have not felt the need to get into any other game to this degree of seriousness for the past few years and I doubt that I'm gonna feel the need to get it into anything else in the near future. So it only makes sense for me to try to share that love and that obsession with other people that are as passionate about this game as I am. So please feel free to leave me any comments or feedback Insert your standard like and subscribe ask here, and please always feel free to reach out and tell me your story because no matter who you are, I would love to hear it.